So part A of this question, here's a quadratic expression. When asked to write it in this particular form, you might recognise that as the process called completing the square. So let's have a look at the expression that we've to change or rewrite in a special form. And we'll ignore this 50. We'll deal with that later. Uh, we'll just look at the first two terms of this expression. And we can note that there's a common factor of 3. Let's take that outside the brackets. We get x squared plus 8x. And there's the 50 tagged on, which we'll deal with later. So let's deal with the 3 later and concentrate on the x squared plus 8x. Now, the form we're trying to get that in is something squared, x plus a number squared. And it's this x squared plus 8x that's going to lead us to that. So we're attempting to write x squared plus 8x as x plus something times x plus something. This is the squared term here. Um, outsides and insides have to be the same because this number has to be the same. Uh, it would have to be 4. The trouble is, if we multiply this out, we do get the x squared. And we do get the 8x from the outsides and insides. 4x and 4x does give us 8x. But when we multiply the last two terms, 4 times 4 gives us a 16. x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now, nobody asked for that 16. It wasn't there. So if we're attempting to rewrite x squared plus 8x as x plus 4 all squared, we know that's wrong because we have a 16 that we don't want. Well, let's just take it away. Now it's not there. So this is another way of writing x squared plus 8x. We can write it as x plus 4 all squared. But when we multiply that out, there's a 16 we never wanted. Let's take it away. Now, what a mess we've got. Let's multiply out the first brackets. Bring back the 3 into the scene. 3 lots of x plus 4 all squared minus 3 sixteens are 48. And then we've got this plus 50. Remember, it doesn't come under the influence of that 3. Uh, that three the influence of that 3 stops at these brackets. So it's just 50, not 3 times 50. So finally, we've got 3 lots of x plus 4 all squared Take 48 from 50, and we get 2. So we've finally written it in this form as requested. Now, you might be wise at this stage to just double-check by multiplying the whole thing out, just to check that nothing's gone wrong. That's x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus 2. So it'll be 3x squared plus 24x plus 48 plus 2, which is indeed the 50 that we needed. So everything's in order. Let's look at part B. Part B, we're given a function, and it's a cubic function. x cubed plus 12x squared plus 50x minus 11. And we're asked to differentiate it. Find f dashed of x. So we bring in our usual rules. Bring down the power to the front and reduce the power by 1. So it's 3x squared. 2 brought down the front. 2 times the 12. 24. Bring down that power by 1. That's x to the 1. So we don't need to mention the 1. It's just 24x. Plus, when you differentiate 50x, you'll just get 50. And when we differentiate a constant, it vanishes. So we've ended up with 3x squared plus 24x plus 50, which you might think is a bit familiar. Indeed, it's the first expression from part A that we rewrote. So let's move on to part C 
and see how these two parts come together. Hence it otherwise explain why the curve with this equation, y equals f of x, so we've got the curve with this cubic expression as its equation, uh, why it's strictly increasing for all values of x. So we're trying to determine the fact that that graph, whatever it looks like, is always going uphill, that the gradient is always positive. So this is the crucial, crucial thing, that if we've got a strictly increasing graph, its gradient will be positive. So we have to show that this gradient, f dashed of x, can never be zero or less. f dashed of x is equal to three lots of x plus four, all squared, plus 2, and that's from part A. We know that this gradient that we've found, the gradient formula 3x squared plus 24x plus 50, can be rewritten in this special form. Certain things about this, if we look at x plus 4 all squared, that's strictly greater than 0. Now, the only risk we might have is this, if it is zero, but it would be zero. Well, yes, it could be zero if x was negative four, so we'll have to say that that's greater than or equal to zero. Certainly can never be negative. You can't square a number, a real number, and get a negative quantity, but it could be zero if x was negative four. So that's the most we can say it's greater than or equal to zero. And also if we multiply a number which is zero or greater by three, it'll still be greater than or equal to zero. It could still be zero. However, when we add two to any of the values this might take, we certainly then cannot be zero, but we still must be positive. plus 2 must be greater than or equal to 2. If I add 2 to both sides there, which is certainly strictly uh, greater than 0. So just to confirm that, what we've said here is that that expression must be strictly greater than 0. It can never be 0 and is always positive. Something squared is positive or zero. Three times that's positive or zero. But if we add two, we've got a strictly positive answer. It can never be zero. So f of x is always increasing. And just to emphasize it, since f dashed of x is strictly greater than zero.